Hello everybody, this is Purge, bringing you guys a first person replay commentary. This is a Legion Commander game that I played about a week ago. And next up is Dazzle, but we'll cover Legion for this game. Uh, you know what? I messed up. It was supposed to be Dazzle first, but I'm making Legion. Oh well, here we are. Legion, Dazzle, I'll make tomorrow Bloodseeker, Nightstalker, Beastmaster, and Draw Ranger. Those are, that's on my list. Okay. Um, hop into the Dota buff first, check things out. Legion Commander as a hero is very popular in pubs. I was very surprised to see her at 21st. Uh, one of the more popular heroes we've looked over. Um, her win rate is actually pretty good at 48.29%. She's the only strength hero that is a female, uh, which is a bit interesting. There aren't very many female characters. Um, and her skill build is terrible. The, if you guys watched my pubcast yesterday, this is the build that most people do on Legion Commander. It's horrible. You shouldn't max out this ability anymore. Got buffed recently. Uh, got modified, but I think buffed. Um, and now life steals at 55% for every counterattack you get. The counterattack chance went up as well. It's at 25%. But the cooldown is very high now at 2.7. So by getting more skill points in it, you're basically increasing the amount of moment of courages you can proc over time. And also increasing the lifesteal by a slight amount, very small amount, 10% per level, which isn't that much. It's mostly about the cooldown reduction, so you should only max this out when you're planning to get hit by a lot of units, or if it's into the late game. Then it's very good, because you can moment of courage more often, because people are attacking you faster. Skill you should max out first is overwhelming odds. It does, uh, it's a, a it's an AoE, you click it on the ground, it does more damage based on how many units are there, and how many heroes. It does bonus damage to illusions, uh... 25% I believe it does bonus damage to illusions and some means as a percent of their current health so that means if illusions take four times the damage then overwhelming odds one shots them because it does 25% of an illusions current health so it's very good against illusion heroes um, good against heroes like uh, chaos knight good against heroes like PL you can figure out which one's the real one very easily and the reason that that was added most likely is because otherwise um, Legion would be very weak against them because you can never figure out which one is the real one and then you wouldn't be able to duel them. So it's a very good counter for that reason. Uh, very good against counter pushes because a lot of grouped up creeps and heroes, you do bonus damage to them. Uh, 65 per hero and 20 per creep. So if you grab a hero with 5 creeps and a typical wave or 4 creeps for a typical wave, you're doing 160 plus 80 gives you 240 damage plus a hero. It's about 300 damage per hero. It's good. So one creep wave and one here is about 300 damage. Anything more than that is just a little bit extra on top. You get bonus speed from the creeps and the heroes that you hit, and that lasts for a bit of time. So basically it helps, uh, helps you chase after your enemies. Uh, the damage scales up as per level, and the mana cost is very low at 100. So this ability is just all around really good. If there's a creep wave, it does 300 damage. The cooldown's a little bit long at 18, but whatever, it's AoE. I think it's a good ability. You should max this first. Almost always increases your farming speed, lets you steal kills. You basically need as many kills and last hits and gold as you can get on this hero. So overwhelming odds helps you do it in a carry fashion. Second skill is press the attack. Um, it increases your attack speed, your HP regen. It also removes debuffs. You can cast it on allies if they get stunned. It's similar to the uh, aphotic shield on a badin. If your ally gets disabled, if somebody gets firefly, cast press the attack on them, and that removes the disable. Uh, the only thing I haven't talked about is your ultimate. It's called duel. You cast it on an opponent and it forces them to attack you and you attack them. Nobody can use items or cast abilities and it lasts for 4 seconds. And if somebody dies during the duel duration, they get a permanent bonus damage for the rest of the game. 50 second cooldown, 75 mana cost, melee range cast more or less. So uh, duels will end if the units are pushed 2,000 units apart, which is really far. It basically only happens if there is like a, a relocate or something like that. Um, or a... Even, you'd have to uh, latch like multiple pudge hooks together for that to break. So it's basically very rare. Uh, get that at uh, all points at your ulti. So the skill build you should go is 4-1-1 one, one, basically. One moment, one press the attack, one moment of the courage. And uh, 4 points in overall I mean, odds. And then adjust the skill build according to what you're facing. If you need more attack speed to burst people down, get press the attack. If you're jungling a lot, maybe a couple more points in moment of courage might be worth it. So it comes down to a couple, couple things. Most used items. Blink dagger is really important because it allows you to blink and then use your duel. Uh, the other item that does that is Shadow Blade, but Shadow Blade's not as good, in my opinion. It has a lower win rate here, which doesn't uh, surprise me at all. And the important part is that uh, Shadow Blade does do attack speed and damage, but what you really need is the instant initiation. It's really important, and also for escaping. But the instant initiation is really, really important. Desolator is very highly rated because it helps you kill your opponent in a 1v1. Blade Mail is okay because if somebody you're forcing somebody to hit you, you can reflect damage a bit faster and it gives you a chance to win the duel. But I don't know if I bought Blade Mail this game, but I don't think it's that good. Black King Bar is pretty much required in most cases because you need to be not stunned while you're ulting somebody because that, that's how you do your damage. Armlet's very good. 
because it's a very cheap way to increase your damage, but it is a little scary because of uh, press the attack. I think I did buy armlet this game. Very inexpensive item, only 2400, 20, 2370 gold. It's very, very inexpensive right now, and it gives you 60 damage, I think. Uh, plus 31 damage and 25 strength. It's like 56 damage. That is so much damage for that gold. Ton of damage, 25 attack speed, armor, HP regen, great item on strength carries. So I bought it this game. I thought it was pretty good. AC is very, very good on Legion Commander. You almost always buy this as a second or third item because the hero has very low agility gain and very low base armor, if you can see over 2.5, very low base armor. So that means you don't accrue very much agility, you don't accrue very much armor over the course of the game, so you need to make up for that by getting a Soul Curious. And it just naturally synergizes with the hero. Look how big the win rate is. It's freaking huge, and that's because it's just simply good on the hero. Um, Shadow Blade, lower win rate. Skull Basher is pretty good, but that's because uh, legions are usually pretty farmed at this point, so it makes a lot of sense. Heroes that you're good against. Anti-Mage, because you force him to attack you and you do physical damage, and he attacks fast, so you'll be proccing very often. You can kill him. Good against Broodmother, because you can use Overwhelming Odds, your first skill, to just nuke entire stacks of creep waves. I've seen this in pro games as well. Solo a Legion versus a Brood. Works pretty nicely. Good against Nature's Prophet, because he has a lot of Treants, so your Overwhelming Odds does more damage, and you can ulti him to prevent him from escaping. Good against Huskar, because you do almost all physical damage, and you can debuff off uh, his Burning Spears, I think, with Press the Attack. Maybe. Maybe not. But again, physical damage, he attacks very fast when he gets low, which means more procs of Moment of Courage. If you get a BKB, you're very good against Huskar. Good against Terrorblade, because you can kill his illusions very, very easily, and you can duel him to prevent him from Sundering. Good against Spectre, uh, prevent him from escaping, I guess. Good against Ember Spirit, physical damage, prevent him from escaping. Good against Naga, illusions, uh, prevent him from ulting. It's... it's like, if you look at uh, Naga or Legion on paper, it's really good against cores and heroes that are annoying to kill. Because you could just, it's like, oh, I'm going to stun you for five seconds and force you to attack me, and I'm going to attack you the whole time. Like, that's really good. So that's that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, another reason that Shadow Blade is worse than Blink, because when you are when you cast Press the Attack to give yourself a damage bonus on Shadow Blade, you have to attack them first, then cast Press the Attack, and then Duel. And sometimes people will be able to react in time. If you get a Blink, you can cast Press the Attack from Fog, and then Blink in and immediately Duel them. So that's one reason it's slightly better, in my opinion. Here is that it's bad against. Really bad against Dazzle, because Dazzle can Shadow Grave somebody that gets dueled to prevent the bonus damage from going to you. You usually kill them afterwards, but if you don't get that damage bonus, it really adds up over the course of the game. Bad against Troll, because then a 1v1 Troll will beat you, because he attacks faster and faster and faster, and he bashes you, which prevents you from attacking. Bad against Winter Wyvern, because Winter Wyvern can use Cold Embrace to give somebody full physical resistance, so you can't kill them. Bad against Magnus. I don't know why. Maybe because you can skewer somebody away because they can RP you, blah, blah, blah. Bad against Wraith King because he can just resuscitate or re revive. Um, bad against Shadow Demon because Shadow Demon can disrupt the person you're going on. Bad against Oracle because Oracle can ult the person you're going on. And bad against Tiny because usually when you duel somebody, Tiny will just avalanche toss you and kill you. So it makes a lot of sense. Strength gain is pretty good. Agility gain is kind of bad. And int gain is pretty good for, a, for an interior. Uh, and then myself, I have played very few Legion Commander games, 11, and I've got a 63% win rate. So I, I don't know, I'm okay at Legion. So that's it for the Dota buff section. Hope that helps. And now let's hop into the game. Play. So, uh, played with some friends again, and random Legion Commander. I think, I don't remember how I lane this. I I feel like Legion is best either as a mid hero or an off lane. I think he's a very, very poor jungle hero. And the reason is because. Your hero doesn't do anything until you hit level 6. Like, imagine, like, even a Bloodseeker jungle I feel is better, because at least Bloodseeker gets bonus damage and can spot enemies and can Rally. maybe come out of the jungle to kill somebody. But uh, the problem with the Legion Commander is that you don't have a stun. So all you can do is right-click people, cast press the attack to keep them alive, jungle, and cast overwhelming odds, which does decent damage, but you're not just going to come out of the jungle and, like, nuke somebody and get a kill. Like, it doesn't really work like that. If it does, okay, you got lucky. But in most cases, Jungle Legion Commander is just frankly terrible, and I think it's maybe a bit worse Finger. now than it was in the past. You're better at life stealing now with Moment of the Courage, but you do less damage with it because it has a bigger cooldown. So it's a little bit worse than it used to be for jungling. So, I mean, if you do jungle, yeah, you can buy a fast Midas and blah, 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 and get these fast items. But not really, because yeah, you'll get a Midas, or maybe you'll farm a Shadow Blade. But until you finish your Shadow Blade, you have no items, and you can't do anything. If somebody invades your jungle and pressures you, you just suck. Your hero's horrible. So the only way to play Legion Commander the correct way, in my opinion, if people don't pressure you, if you're playing against anyone remotely competent, you will either play offlane or you will play mid. So because I randomed, I got extra gold. So again, maybe not the best example of a game, but 
I opted for two sets of regen and a boots. And that's because if I look at their heroes, they don't have a very good support. They don't have any support, really. So at most, it's like, what, a potom? He can shoot an arrow. I can dodge that. If I have boots, I have a better chance to dodge that. I have really good movement speed because Legion... Uh, oh, God, I'm so sorry. Legion actually has one of the... Is this a bug? This has to be a bug. I think this is... This has to be a bug. I think I'm actually 370 movement speed, but I think it's a bug. I'm, I'm gonna check on play Dota or something. The battle begins. Pull that one up. This will do nice. A tie to the future. First blood. And then we'll find the G commander. I'm pretty sure her base movement speed is high. Yeah, her base movement speed is 320. It's just a replay bug. That's all. So I do have 370 movement speed. So a very high movement speed, one benefit of the hero. Uh, really good base strength at 26. So I've got like 650 HP no matter what. If I'm playing offlane normally, I would either go boots with one tango or I would go stout shield south tango, depending on what you want to do. But basically getting a very fast orb of venom and boots is really beneficial, especially if you're in a 1v1. And because I am in a 1v1 here, I just want to get my third skill. Like a draw really can't do anything against me. She has a Wraith Band, a Salve, and a Tango. And a Drought doesn't really do good damage until she hits level 6. Even if it costs me a bit of gold, if I'm in a 1v1, then I, I just want to pressure her constantly. I never allow her to, to get easy last hits. Because every time I hit her, I do 63 damage, and she can't respond with nearly as much. She hits for about 50, and her animation is way worse. So to beat her in lane, all I have to do is get an Orb of Venom, and then chase her down. I'm going to give myself a bit of a speed boost here. I got about 30 movement speed out of that. I think uh, the draw had pretty good pathing here. I maybe should walk closer before I casted that, because as soon as I cast it, she sensed danger. If I walk forward first and then cast it, I might have been able to get a couple units closer. Uh, but with the boots and an orb of venom, I can now slow her by 12%, which is going to be about 30 movement speed per second. And that means that my my already huge movement speed advantage of 370 goes all the way... I, I basically have 370 versus her 270. Plus, if I cast my first skill, I get an extra 30. So I'm basically 400 versus 270. Huge movement speed advantage, basically, uh, in that matchup. So by looking at her uh, her her items and knowing where my hero has their, uh, her strengths, her strengths are in trading hits, because I can uh, moment of courage for a hit, which life steals what 50%, which is 30 HP. It's pretty good. So... Moment of Courage gives me an easy right-click advantage. I have about the same armor as Drow, but my damage is more, my movement speed is more, and now that I have, and since I have same regen as her, then I should just pressure her. It's very simple. So we'll, we'll speed this up until the game resumes. And now I'm basically just running after her and right-clicking her. I maybe could have kept going there, but it's worth probably backing off. I've, uh, did I also hit two before her? I did, because I've been pushing her back, and I've been closer to the creep wave than she has, so... It's kind of an okay place. It's kind of bad that my creep wave pushed, because if the creep wave actually stayed back, I would have been able to just simply keep the creep equilibrium and uh, continue to regen from the back line, and that would have been pretty good to do. Now I'm into more of a passive position, and she's actually right-clicking me a lot, which is smart of her. I also should have adjusted my camera slightly southwest from where it is, because I need to see if other heroes are approaching, but I actually took a little bit too much damage there, and I ended up salving and buying a stout shield. If I had a stout shield, I would have taken at least... I've got 100 damage less there, maybe 200. Happy to cast this on, on her for a nuke, and we'll see where she runs. She ended up not being stupid. Uh, if she was really bad, she would have ran to the left, and then I would have been able to chase her down. I'm just saying her because it's a draw ranger, not necessarily a female plane. I hope nobody cares. Just what I'm comfortable with. I've got a big creep wave here, so I can possibly chase again, but the important thing is I'm just pressuring. Because if I'm running a draw like this, She's going to get scared. Now she's so far away from the tower that she has to run left. And I've, I've been able to chase her down now. And because I do have the uh, the Orb of Venom, I should be able to get this kill. And I'm attack speed root. But unfortunately, there was a haste on the pot. I was so upset about that. I was like, double kill, baby! As soon as she left in, I was like, I got a double kill. Um, but unfortunately, she had a haste. So, not quite. Although I did pretty good damage to the bottom here. Forced the TP out of the drow. I mean, she would have TP'd anyways, but... I have to be a little careful about my positioning here, but with just a little bit of mana, I was able to get a, uh, a first blood. Did I get first blood? Uh, I did not. Tusk died first. That's right at the beginning. But I, I still got a kill. And that kill gives me an extra level advantage. I'm now level 4, and I'm in a really, really good place versus the Jar Ranger. So, what do I buy next? Uh, the solution is basically Bottle or Soul Ring. Um, if you're in a safe farm and you're not taking too much harass, I think Soul Ring is probably better. But in a situation like this, where I'm playing offlane, I think a Bottle is really good. 
do have to worry about techies a little bit here. Uh, I seem to remember it was like the worst techies I've ever played against in my whole life though, so I think we're okay. But buying a bottle, bottle will give me a little bit of burst mana, a little bit of burst regen, I can grab a haste rune, I can grab an invis, I can grab a double damage, all things that make your hero a lot better. And pretty much the hero entirely comes down to being able to get duels off. If you get duels off, you can become a carry. If you don't get duels off, your hero just kind of sucks. A little bit of nuke here for last hit. I've got my bottle coming anyways. Uh, rune up in 10 seconds. And again, skill build continues where I max out overwhelming odds because it allows me to pressure my opponent, lower his HP, um, increases my movement speed. So do a full bottle. Well, I'll, I'll do two bottles here. Unfortunately, the rune was gone because the techies took it, but um, so I'll save my last bottle. But on the bright side, I've still got three levels of overwhelming odds. I can continue harassing this Drow, who still doesn't have boots as soon as he comes up. Fortunately, spotted by the the bottom, so just got to be a little bit careful about getting attacked and bait him into thinking he's safe. I can chase after. Unfortunately, I did get hit by that arrow, but it should be fine. At this point, you kind of just have to fight. This is some nice movement by the bottom. Uh, good juking by him. Really needed to get a, a proc there for me to get the kill. But they basically just outplayed me there. They did that very nicely. The Apollo ran away when I started going on her. Then I went back on the Drow. And then it was just a simple who, who's going to do more damage in the right click. And they, they had more damage to me there. Um, so yeah, that was nicely done by them. Uh, I was a little upset about that. But I did still end up killing the Drow. So it's kind of worth it. Uh, I'm sure the Drow got like some levels out of that if we take a look. Drow is level five, so I, you know, I'm about about equivalent, but I'm sure my net worth is way higher, and it is. I have 1900, she has 1300, so pretty big difference. It's about the difference of a boots here. Um, she has purchased boots of speed at this point. Drow, you. But I can definitely continue to pressure. If I just pressure like this, and all those creeps are dying, and she's not able to be there for it, and that's because they have a weak support basically. That's the only reason because of the weak support. If two heroes get too clo or get close together, I'll, I'll definitely cast on them. It's a big nuke. 219 after reduction, it's about 300 a person. Happy to chase after and right-click at this point. And I'm just pressuring, and I'm doing this because it forces maybe people to make mistakes. And maybe if they don't make mistakes, yeah, whatever. But look at that, in the meantime, I'm pressuring the tower. The tower's taking more damage, those creeps are dying, that's less experience for the drow. Maybe I'm not getting full experience as well, but I'm, I'm basically keeping two heroes busy here. And luckily I didn't run into a mine. I think that was because we knew that Techies was bad and uh, Techies spent a lot of time talking. Oh, I actually found all the mines there. They did very little damage to me. I was really surprised. Uh, but took a moderate amount, so I needed to press the attack to get some HP regen. Every press the attack does 30 HP for 5 seconds. 150 HP for 110 mana. That's the trade-off. But with my bottle, I can very, very easily make my mana go a lot farther. If I had a Soul Ring, I wouldn't have nearly as much HP regen. But Soul Ring does give you more mana over time, which is kind of nice. So... Unless we had the haste of Tinker here. This is kind of dangerous. I almost dueled there, but then I realized I was just going to die. So instead, I, I decided to walk away. But luckily, Leshrac came, which kept me alive. And then I thought this march was mine for some reason. I, I don't know why, but I I thought the march was ours. So I, was, I just ran right into the march. That was really embarrassing. Not the best start for the game. Um, Could have done a bit better here. But, you know, I pressured a lot, at least. My net worth is still second highest, which is pretty cool. And the draw was still way down there. She's actually the lowest in the game. And if I just played the lane passively and last hit while the draw last hit, she would harass me more than I harassed her. She would get probably a little bit less creep than, creeps than me. And then all it takes is one arrow and I can get killed. It's a huge importance that, that I did pressure that hard. So even though I have ended up dying twice in ways that maybe I shouldn't have, it still puts me in a pretty good spot for this game. Also, part of the reason my net worth is so high is because there's a lot of players that are bad at farming in this game. So don't think that just because I pressured this a little bit, it was some miraculous thing that gave me a huge advantage. But pressuring the pressuring her that much did make a big difference. Uh, Tread's really, really good on Legion Commander. You can maybe argue phase because it allows you to catch up. But I personally feel like you don't really need the, the phase. And the attack speed is really important because you're getting all this bonus damage from really easy kill here. Just a simple duel. Takes three auto attacks and she dies. Um... Very, very good to get treads when you have 
an ability that scales very high in plus damage, and that's what I got. With duel, you get bonus damage. If you get phase and you've got bonus damage from phase, you've got bonus damage from duel, you're not leveraging as much, but if you buy treads, you're really leveraging this victory damage. And the other thing is that you're actually spending a decent amount on mana. Press the attack's very expensive at 110. Uh, overwhelming odds isn't super inexpensive either, so by going treads, it allows you to get a bit more value out of um, out of your mana pool. And I do cast press the attack on neutrals sometimes, completely worth it. That's like, what, 6 neutrals is 120 damage, so it's like 280 new. Not amazing, but okay. And again, casting spells to suppress the attack. I basically just went to do this because the creep wave is a little bit too close to the tower, and I didn't really feel comfortable farming there. And this way I'm off the map, everybody's a little bit more scared if they actually watch your map. I can use the bottle to heal myself back up to full. And I've got another 800 gold after that duel. So for me to get this kill off, I basically need to approach from the safety of the trees. I need him to go past me. Now I'm close enough where it's very, very easy. See what he tries here. Oh, this is a... Uh, I got super out juked here. I thought for sure he was going to the corner, but he actually did a circle. That was really nicely done by him. Or her, whatever. Uh, I don't know if it would have been a kill, but it would have been a lot of damage for sure. I uh, might have been able to, uh, you know, if I put an Orb of Venom on him at a decent position, Dyer's I probably could have killed him. This was unfortunate. Uh, Haste Renew would have been really nice to have on my hero. I wondered if I could have killed him there, I wasn't completely sure. Just had to get the duel on when everybody's around. Yeah, there we go. If he just ran back to his base, he would have been fine, I think. But I th Or if he just ran past me immediately, my, my teammates wouldn't have been able to catch up in time. But because he spent so much time running in circles, it allowed my allies to show up. And at that point, it was just easy for me to get the kill. So, no mana. Uh, should probably go back to the lane. I Looks like I went back to heal. I don't really like this move. I should have shifted back to the bot lane, I think, to continue farming. I mean, I'm a, I'm a ways away from, from getting another rune, but I, I think this is a mistake. Because I could be getting an experience bot, I could be pressuring bot. Nobody's even there. The drow's not there, I'm not there. I, I feel like that that could have been better better pressure, Radiant's basically. Middle tower is under attack. I mean, I refill my bottle and I get like 300 mana, but I, I think experience and gold is a bit more important right now. So, I, I don't really like that decision for me to go back Radiant's there. Again, continue to pressure attack. the drow if possible, even if I'm not going for the kill. Four skill points and bam, I've zoned her out of lane. I don't even have to hit her. And that's that's really useful. I'll pressure from the side. No, she's actually leaving the lane because I had four skill points in that. And she went from 80% HP Radiant's to 50. When she's at 50 HP, she, she absolutely can't lane against me. It's watching the tink, or the uh, techies, sorry. Um, duels are really important, though. They really do increase your damage. I probably should have a Quelling Blade, by the way, if you're jungling. You should definitely get a Quelling. It's one of the ways that Moment of Courage is good for jungling, even though it's not actually a good playstyle. Um, wanted to get that last hit. Then it lost me the next one. And not that one, though. Um, Radiant's bottom tower what was I talking about? Uh, should have a Quelling Blade. And, oh yeah, the, the early duels are really important. Because if you if you get your duel off, you get permanent damage for the whole game. And that increases your farming speed, increases your damage to heroes. It's just it's just so useful. This bastard. That was a, a bit of a mistake there. I should have overwhelming odds to start things off. It wouldn't have done huge damage, but it would have done some damage. And I thought that I would need press the attack to get the kill because I didn't have anyone backing me up, so I was going to need a bunch of attack speed to catch him. Um, so I cast press the attack. I should have nuked press the attack and dueled really fast, but he was able to get two a mine off and ulti me, and I almost died very, very close. If I didn't have such huge strength, then I definitely would have died there. This is hard as well. At this point, it's almost impossible to get a kill here, but I have to be careful against two heroes that definitely could kill me. So I think the draw is six here, so her damage, yeah, her damage is actually okay now. I have to be very careful about uh, taking damage from her. Radiance Getting the blink is the most important attack. thing to do, and if I was a little bit more efficient in the early game, spent less time running back to base for a couple bottle charges, and I definitely could have it. And the other mistake, of course, is that I, um... Dyer's uh, what was I gonna say? Attack. Other mistake. Dyer's I can't remember. Are fortified. Just have to stay alive here, gonna break some vision. I'm gonna put a nuke down, and I would really want to duel her here, but unfortunately, uh, I'll just duel her. Luckily, we had enough damage. But it's, it's super important that you get a lot of successful duels off, and the best way to do that is to organize with allies. Don't rely on you just by yourself to get kills if you're playing Legion Commander, because she's she basically has attributes of a carry. She doesn't do very much damage in the early game. You shouldn't be expecting. 
um, just to get lucky and to crit a bunch of times or counter what the, whatever it's called. Moment of Courage a bunch of times. You shouldn't just necessarily expect that. You need to know how much damage you're going to do. And the easiest way to get dual kills is to gank with an ally. Ha say, talk to your mid player and be like, hey, can you shift to my lane so I can get a dual kill? And if it's a less track, it's the easiest thing ever. Because as soon as you duel somebody, he's going to land Split Earth, he's going to land a Lightning Storm, and he's going to Pulse Nova for like two seconds. And that guy just dies. 100% just dead. Dead hero. And if you do that consistently, it gives you a big advantage. Hey, man, look at that. Press the attack, blink forward. I think he was lagging right there, unfortunately. I still got the kill, but the only reason I got the kill is because I was in a good position. That should have been easier. Bloodseeker disconnected. It actually took a long time for him to come back, if I remember correctly. Uh, it's just it's just really important that you do it correctly. Shift somebody to your lane, help you get the kill. Don't rely on yourself to do it by yourself, because if players are playing as good as you, there's a there's a pretty equal chance that you'll kill them as them killing you, or your duel will just fail. And if your duel fails and you don't get a kill out of it, like what was the point? You need to you need to snowball. This hero is not just a snowball farm in terms of golden experience. It's also a snowball hero in terms of getting successful duels and getting kills. It's really really important because it pushes you over the edge. And I think you'll see that this game because I got a lot of duel kills, and because of that, it allowed me to be carry this game instead of just an off laner or initiator. And it completely changes how strong this hero is in uh, pro games as well. Because if you get a lot of duels off, the hero gets really strong. If you don't get a lot of duels off, and most of the time you don't, then the hero just kind of sucks. In pubs, whatever, you can make it work. It's going to be fine. But some of these other games, it's a really big deal. So duels coming off cooldown in about 15 seconds, which means I want to go fight soon. Bloodseeker is pressuring the tower. If anybody comes to defend, I can just blink in and duel them. If I have a Shadow Blade, I can't really do that. So that's why blink is so important. And I was also thinking about my skill build a little bit here. By getting one less point and press the attack, I lost 20 attack speed. But uh, I lower the cooldown of Mormon of Courage, which could give me an extra auto attack. I guess if you think about it that way, press the attack is just simply better in all ways for, for attacks. I should have uh, casted my nuke here. Didn't get the duel off, but we did get the kill. And I did end up dying for that. So mistake I made there was first of all the uh, the Bloodseeker didn't respond very well to me dueling. He should have casted Blood right immediately. Rupture doesn't work because the hero's not moving. Should have been his second, second skill. He also could have casted uh, Blood Rage or whatever his first skill on me. That would increase my damage. That would have been good. And uh, what else? Oh, and I also should have casted Overwhelming Odds before I dueled, but I felt like we had enough damage. But because the Bloodseeker wasn't paying attention, we lost the kill. So slight mistakes, there were three mistakes, three potential mistakes there, basically. One of which is mine, completely. So I didn't get the dual damage, we still got the kill, but I died afterwards. And I think I did have a killing spree, I did have a killing spree. So. Okay. So TP into the top lane, because it's pushing. Uh, my hero against Tinker is actually very good, because if I do catch the Tinker before he lasers me, I can solo kill him at some point, if I get carried enough. Or if I, if I get farmed Radiant's enough, that is. You can see there's a mine there on the replay. Looks like three. I don't know if they're remotes or landmines, but we'll find out in a second. It looks like they're remotes. Uh, killing Windrange is a little tough because she can go physical immune by my misses. Looks like an ob sword. If he came back towards the other way, I maybe could dual kill him. It's a little tough, but I can maybe do it. Probably should have... You almost didn't get that kill. That was scary. Got a nuke in two. As soon as I get the mischance on me, it's not worth being there. I right clicked myself on the snowball because I don't want to take the extra damage. I just need a moment of courage and I can click. Even that kill wasn't good. Wasn't good. Has I can kind of stay around though with Leshrek here. If I duel somebody, we could get a kill maybe. So most of these heroes don't do very good damage unless. Uh, 
Unless they're casting spells, so. At this point, I felt like I overstayed a little bit, so I decided to retreat. Top tower is under attack. I actually do kind of like the fourth level of Moment of Courage here, though. Like, one skill point in Moment of Courage isn't gonna outdo one level of press the attack, I feel. But once you get up to the fourth level, it can actually make a really big difference, because, like, Going from 2.7 cooldown to 2.1 is probably not going to, if you're only hitting one guy, it's probably not going to make a difference between like one hit or two hits. Whereas getting like one skill point a moment of courage versus four is a big difference if there's any creeps around. That guy's very dead. RPL was dying a lot here. So uh, next item that I'm going to be buying is going to be a BKB. And the reason I need a BKB is because of laser uh, on the team here pretty much. Right, so wrap the kill. I need the laser, pretty much. Laser is really important. Or I need to stop the laser, because the laser makes me miss. If I'm missing, I do no damage. So I was kind of hoping somebody would come to the lane, because I have a DD, but they don't always, so... At some point, you just need to push. Like, honestly, I think I should have pressured this tower a bit more this game, because I did a really good job of pressuring it early on. I should have pressured it harder. It's gonna pop the glyph, and I'm gonna pretend like I'm gone. And then I'll wrap around. If anybody shows up, I blink in and get the duel off, otherwise I just last hit. So, um, the reason I bought the Mythical Hammer over the Ogre Club is because I wanted the damage a bit more. Maybe I should go club on a Strength Hero. If you're if you're like an Agility Carry, maybe the, the Hammer is definitely better, but I think it's probably better to go Ogre Club now that I think about it. it gives you 190 you HP, gives you 10 Strength. I think that's better than just 24 damage, personally. Got a DD here. Really wanted to catch this guy. Yeah, that guy is definitely good. Until that happens. That duel is good. Don't know how we saw that techies. Um, apparently we had vision or something. It actually worked out okay though. Um, as soon as I saw the draw was really low, I figured I could go in. I think I... I don't know if I would have been able to kill that uh, that Potom more in the jungle though, because I kind of needed to press the attack. I think it was the only way that was going to work. At this point, we should probably just back up. Got 72 bonus damage, really good at this point. In jungle quite easily, uh, but upon seeing the rune, I decided that was more appropriate. easier way to increase your HP and pay man free gold and experience. So your skill build will change slightly between press the attack and your third skill, depending on how you're doing. If you're doing a really good job when you're carrying, I would say get more of your third skill. If you are just trying to get some kills... I maybe should have dueled him there, but I went for the easy kill instead. And we're so far ahead that I figured I could still get another duel off. Again, healing up. You can heal really good in creep, in creep waves too. We got 170 HP every time that I life steal now. So good. Again, tread switch to int whenever you cast press the attack. I think one of the reasons that I feel fairly comfortable with Legion Commander is because she's very gank heavy. You have to understand like gank approaches to get somewhere without being spotted. And um, because she plays aggressive, and it's a lot of tread switching, which I love. So I, f I feel pretty good on Legion Commander. I, th I think I identify with this hero a little bit in, in terms of playstyle. I still don't think she's a very good hero, and sometimes I go a little too YOLO in this hero. But, like, look how strong I am right now. I, I have 86 bonus damage from duels because we're running over them. I've got magic immunity. I've got a blink. My only weakness right now is a little bit lack of HP, pretty much. Dyer's top tower has been I should have BKB'd here. If I would have BKB'd, that would have been the easiest kill ever. I was able to get that techie skill, but I just should have BKB'd. Not really any reason not to BKB, basically, there. Because if I if you BKB you guarantee the kill. And I knew there were three I knew there were more heroes there, I believe. 
Maybe I didn't, but I think there were. it was obvious there were more heroes there. So if I just BKB instead, I guarantee the kill on the Jar Ranger. I guarantee the duel. That's a bonus 14 damage that I could have had. You could look at that like missing last hits pretty much, you know? It's, it's a huge deal. He should have turned his ulti on way earlier there, and he could have killed that guy instantly. If he just turned out his ulti and then casted his spells, he would have done like th three seconds of pulse damage. It would have been a dead tinker for sure. So just should have turned my BKB on, took way more damage than I needed to, took stuns, and just would have been a fast duel. Fast duel, hero's dead, back up. And trading kills for dual damage and a BKB charge, it's worth it every time in the early game. You know, late game a BKB will be a big deal because I have to worry about techies, mines, tinker, and uh, maybe shackle shots. But at this point in the game, they're absolutely worth trading. It's all, it's all you want as a Legion Commander. You want gold advantage, and you want level advantage, and all that stuff. So I really want this DD here, because it's going to give me a much better chance of getting a solo kill, or uh, dueling for a kill. Ah, oh, it turned into a bunny ring. I forgot about that. Well, at least I'm hitting 16, so my duel now lasts for 5.5 seconds, and gives me 18 bonus damage. If it were. And now, now it's kind of the stage where they've been ganked so much that they feel really scared. And the way that you should adjust this is basically you need to start, um, you need to gank a little bit less and farm a little bit more. And a lot of, I've kind of learned this a bit over the last couple months, especially when playing in sub games, because in sub games, if I'm playing a ganker hero, people five man a lot. And the counter to that is basically just farming, so sometimes you just gotta farm, man. Definitely want to duel the tinker if possible. Did eventually get some some attacks out there. <laughs> got a double out of it, got bonus damage. Still have my uh, Orb of Venom, I think that's fine. Now the, the next item I'm building is a heart. It might be a little confused when I'm building that, because I, I think that AC is so much better. And I think AC is a much better item. Um, I think this is one of the few games where going for a heart is actually better. Part of the reason is techies. Techies is very, very burst heavy, but if you survive the burst, then you're fine. That's no threat. Um, the other issue is there's a tinker. The, one of the best counters to tinker is actually building HP, because for him to cast spells on you, it costs him mana. So for him to go through rotations of using rearm, it costs him more and more and more mana. So by increasing your HP by a thousand, that forces him to rearm and dag on and laser an extra time, which is like 500 mana. So you building HP is in some ways a lot easier than him getting extra mana pool. Like that much extra mana pool is huge. 500 extra mana is like a 5,000 gold item, right? So you're trading your HP in exchange for his mana cost. So if I if I just get like a heart right now and I have 2,500 HP, Tinker would have to rearm like two or three times to be able to kill me. No, it completely ignoring the fact that I have a BKB. Like, that takes a long time to kill me, right? So by buying a heart, it gives me a really good chance of surviving versus all these heroes. And I've talked about this principle a couple times before. If your damage is far higher than theirs is, it's time to build HP, in my opinion. It's better to do that than it is to build more damage. Unless they're, they have a carry that's comparable to you in terms of damage. If one of their heroes is pretty similar, then it gets a little iffy. At that point, it's a bit better to usually just keep building damage with a mix of HP. But if you're like the only carry compared to them, or their carry is doing really poorly, just build damage. If they have very burst heavy heroes that don't scale super one, they'll late game. And this is one of those games where I think it's okay to do this. And again, heart is slightly a damage item on Legion Commander. It gives you 40 damage after it's completed because it gives you 40 strength. So it's not all about just survivability. Um, you might also wonder, is Scotty better? Uh, I think Scotty's... It's okay. But I think I would rather just get a heart for the raw HP, because if I was a, if I wasn't a strength hero, I'd say get Scotty for sure. But since I'm a strength hero, it's it's okay. It's it's fine to just keep my HP as full as possible all the time, and have a slightly lower chance of me um, winning a duel by having more HP. Uh, the Scotty obviously gives you attack speed, gives you slightly less damage, gives you a really good slow. But the downside to it is that then they attack you slower, and which means that if you're solo dueling somebody that's weak, you're, they're going to attack you very slow, and that might decrease the amount of times that you proc with your moment of courage. So, 
think Scotty would situationally be good, but this game it's probably not as good as our heart, I feel. The balance between that those two items is very, very light. It's, it's hard to find sometimes which one is better, but I think this game it's definitely the, the heart is superior. So, spending some time farming, which again is fine because I have all this bonus damage. If I didn't have bonus damage and I was only hitting for about 150, damn dude, I would probably just be ganking. But since I have so much bonus damage, it's fine. I can go do what I want. So what I wanted to do at this point, I was like, alright, I need to start killing this Tinker more, and I need to start predicting where he's going to be, and that's the best way to play against Tinkers. You shouldn't say, oh, he's top, let's go top and kill him. So by the time you get there, he's probably gone. So what you have to do is you have to go sit near a creep wave, and you have to say, Tinker, you're eventually going to come top, and I'm going to kill you when you do. And then you just wait, and you need Blink Dagger to do this, of course. If you've got Shadow Blade, you might miss your opportunity. A little bit of fighting going on bot, a lot of heroes, so I kind of felt like maybe I'm wasting my time, but then... Found a little techie. It's a very, very easy duel. I don't even have to cast overwhelming odds. At this point in the game, because I have so much damage, I can very easily kill that guy. Also helps when there's creeps around, because then you'll proc your moment of courage, or... God, I always remember. It is moment of courage. Yes, I remembered. You'll proc your moment of courage a lot more if you have creeps around, so... Uh, and that will be my heart finish, so heart is finished. I don't have a TP scroll, but I've got 3k HP, so I feel in a pretty good spot here. I don't actually have my ultimate here, so I'm just going to have to chase him. Took a little damage from Drow, but I've got BKB. I'm really not worried at all. I bet he maybe might have juked and TP'd. I'm not sure. But I'm not too concerned about that. I'm just going to run over here, buy some TP scrolls, and shift on Overlook for more kills. Like, at this point, I can be as aggressive as I want to because my net worth is so high and my survivability is so high. If you want to see the items of everybody else in the game, Dryranger basically just has a Helm of the Dominator. Oops, I'm sorry. All right. Helm of the Dominator, damage. Tinker's only got a dag on. Uh, there's an Ags on Wind Ranger, but that's it. If she had maybe a Daedalus, I would be worried right now, because I definitely could die through a Shackle Shot, but ignoring that, not a big deal. Jungle, jungle, jungle. Wait for somebody to show up, because again, I just want more and more dual damage. There's a regen rune there, which I, I could bottle. And I think I, yeah, it looks like I do end up bottling it. Also consider just Roshin. Um, I don't know if I can Roche well or not. Let's see what my life still is like. I think I can Roche well here just because I have so much damage. I haven't proc'd, I barely proc'd it all there. Once I proc, it's okay. I, I, yeah, I feel like that was not gonna work. It was kind of slow. If I had a Deso or, so, or if I had a, uh, yeah, a Desolator, I think it would have been okay. Because I would have been able to kill their wards pretty rapidly, but. Or the, the Roche rapidly, because he would have less armor, but I, I felt like that was way slower than, than it needed to be. Maybe if everybody went, it would have been fine. And I saw Tinker coming top, so I was like, oh, I want to kill, kill Tinker. But at this point, he's already gone. I'm late. That's what I said. If, if you're reacting directly to how Roche, or how Tinker is moving, then you're, you're never going to make it. You need to be there as he's teleporting in, watch where he goes to, and then try to catch him. That's the best way. And that's why I'm just waiting. I could grab the last hits, but instead, waiting for Tinker to come back top. And we'll see if he does. Still bottom, still bottom, still bottom. Someday he'll come from a different lane. I think about this point I got kind of impatient and decided to give up. So I lost like a good 300 gold by waiting for this. I could have grabbed all these last hits, right? There's his TP on the map. So I'm still waiting for him, just gonna jungle in the meantime. I think now I see that he's here. Sometime soon. Saw the march, it's like, okay, Tinker was in the area. Do the small camp next to it. It's like Tinker's bottom. Still waiting for him. Kills on Tinker are just really important though. Um, most Tinkers should be building Bloodstone first just because it lowers your, your respawn and gives you way, way more mana. Um, but because he didn't, it gives me a good opportunity. If I kill him, it's really beneficial for our team. Man, he just like constantly teleports to the bot lane. Regeneration. My regen popped. Still waiting. I probably waited too long, honestly. I could have pushed this lane all the way out and farmed the jungle, like, all the way through. I could have had, like, an extra 800 HP or something like that. So I wasted a lot of time waiting for Tinker there. Didn't really work. He just didn't go top. I don't know if he had, an, I don't know if he had a ward or he just knew I was there. Maybe he knew that he could kill Bloodseeker. I'm not sure, but I really wasted my time. Easy duel. 
maybe should have BKB there. Didn't really know where the enemy team was, but I guess with Techies dead, I was fairly safe. I've still got an 8 second. It's pretty long. I'll give the uh, Tusk a heal. It's actually a history in bottom, I should look at that, but I always forget to check the response. There we go. Now I know. There's a Tinker bottom as well. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. So Dyer's I did end up. Oh, yeah, I saw him TPing. As soon as I saw him TPing, I was like, haste time, baby. I actually did somehow find him. I don't I don't know how I did, but... Oh, I guess you can walk all the way in there, but... Because I spotted him, easy kill. And now he's dead for 64 seconds. That felt weird, because in the, the period of time where Tinkers were really obnoxious to play against, where Evil Aid was instant, um, Tinkers would really not be alive, or not be dead for very long. And that was because they would get Bloodstones, they'd get all these charges, and then every time you kill him, they'd be dead for like 20 seconds. But because he doesn't have a Bloodstone, he dies for 60 seconds every time you kill him. It actually gives you space to breathe, which is really nice. But when that build actually first got um, first got uh, done and popularized, it was just the worst shit ever. It's like, oh man, I finally killed Tinker, but he's alive in 20 seconds, and he's going to continue doing annoying things to us. So that was really frustrating to play against back in the day. You know, that was like a year ago, really. It was actually about a year ago. It's like those illusions actually get the uh, easy kill here. Illusions actually get the... God, I attack so fast with the hyper stun now. It's actually amazing. Oh, that's a little scary. I was worried about mines here. These missiles really don't do that much to me anymore, though. so much damage here and this is basically the carry moment you're like wow i hit for 400 damage and all i have is a heart and a bkb isn't that incredible like you don't actually have to get that many cs you just need levels and, and kills maybe you should be pressuring towards where the the tinker is a bit more i uh, went to stack these i maybe could have killed them in time but this is a bit safer Let's see what i get for a rune uh is that a haste Double time. Oh, and I used it to farm. What I should have done is I should have just blinked back to the camp, killed the camp, and then backed off, got in the haste, and then came. If I waste half of the duration just farming, it's like, what's the point of grabbing the haste? I could have just left it there. I initially grabbed it because I was afraid that somebody would take it, but it's not going to happen, right? Like, I'm. we have really good vision of them approaching the haste room. No one's going to take it. So, I'll just move up towards the top uh, the top push. Luckily, I didn't get spotted by a creep right here. And now I just need to make sure I know where he is. And I didn't worry about casting a moment of courage there, because I just wanted to kill him. I knew exactly where he was, so all I needed to do for that to be successful was for uh, for me to duel him. So I didn't mess around at the moment. And that's one of the nice things about getting so far ahead. You don't you have less you have less uh, uh, margin for error. Once you don't have to cast press the attack for the extra attack speed, once you hit for 400 a hit, you know you're just going to kill that guy. And that's basically what we're getting at. I've got AC coming now, and uh, my, my attack speed is ridiculous, my armor is ridiculous now. I've got stupid amounts of survivability against physical. I've got very high um, survivability against magical, because not only do I have a stupid amount of HP, but I also have the ability to go magic immune at the moment where they're most likely to nuke me. So at this point, I'm, I'm pretty much a hard carry. There's, uh, there's, no, there's no way around it. My advantage versus my opponents is so big. This is what you need to do as Legion, and to do it correctly, you need to get your duels off. And you need to, to boost and snowball in that way. So one of the cool things about Legion is that if you do get 6-slotted, she's actually quite good 6-slotted for, for two reasons. First of all, you've got your third skill, which is uh, it's essentially carryability. It's extra attacks. 
You've also got your duel, which forces people to fight you, which is great if you're a carry, because you want people to fight you. And uh, that creep ate that. What a what a godsend. What a great little creep. Um, so those two abilities are really good for carry. Your first skill is okay. Your second skill is okay. But if you're six slotted, and then you also have like bonus 200, bonus 400, bonus 300 damage, it's like you're seven slotted or something. So Legion, I think, actually is a pretty good carry. Uh, for next item, I would probably go Abyssal Blade, I would think. Maybe MKB. If I need MKB, I could get an MKB. Um, I don't remember what I built. I don't know if I even built anything past this, but MKB would be good. Um, I would not build a what's that invis item, the Sanj upgrade or whatever. I don't remember what that's called. I wouldn't buy that item. Um, I think it's either MKB or maybe a Sanj and Yasha would be alright to increase my movement speed and help me chase people a bit better. But MKB, I believe, is what I ended up building because uh, helps me versus laser, helps me versus Wind Ranger. Really easy. Kill. I should have BKB here. I did end up still getting the kill, but look how much the heart helped out, though. Like, I easily would have died if I didn't have heart kill. I put the heal on the Bloodseeker because I thought he was going to. I just, I actually just four shot that Tinker, like, and he's dead for 75 seconds. Like, it's so good. And now 123 HP per second. If I had Scotty, it wouldn't happen. Actually, I may have died if I, if I had Scotty there over heart. But now I'm gonna be full HP. Isn't that amazing? My mana pool is really high as well. This is really scary. But there are mines. All you have to do to counter it in some way is blink past where you think the mines are. And I ended up doing that here. I basically just stood to the left of where I anticipated the mines to be. Actually, we could see them, I believe. Once I know where the mines are, pretty simple. The duel would be good. There we go. Gotta remove those mini stuns. Got a Vlad's as well, really nice. Life steal for me. Extra life steal it is. There were so many stasis traps that were not going over. And again, similar positioning. Sit away from the high ground, hit the buildings. Nothing is gonna be wrong. Just watching for them because I'm looking if I'm going to get stunned, if I need to BKB, if I can go for a kill. Duel the Tinker again. And this time I pop BKB because I didn't want to get shackled or anything like that. No suicide this time. So yeah, I was I was pretty happy with this game. It was a little rough early on, but I pressured the carry a lot, put him in a place where he wasn't really gonna be able to carry me. And then continue to get kills. Like there's some really good things about Legion. That's why she was kind of on the hype train in the pro scene for a while. Like you can duel somebody, you can stole, you can stun an important evasive hero for so much time. You can get to a point where you do a ridiculous amount of damage, but in a pro game that isn't really gonna happen. It doesn't happen. Legion is played more like a UBKB, you jump in and you duel somebody, and that's how you start the fight. That way that person is disabled. So it doesn't really work nearly as well in a pro game. It works in pubs, doesn't work in pros. It kind of does. Some there's only like one or two teams that would pick. Them. Really should have BKB. That would be really smart. And we're good anyways, I'm just gonna do a ridiculous amount of damage. Basically every time I hit there, god I had so much damage. Like 425 plus 425 or something. Well, that, that was with my Monkey King bar. So I was hitting for about 600 damage, that means with Vlad's I was life stealing for 60 every time. And if I actually 
proc my moment of courage, I heal for 85, which is like... Yes, it's actually like 300 HP or something. 400 HP, time. that's ridiculous. So yeah, carry Legion Commander, guys. It's uh, it's something you can do. Uh, well, it's offlane, but... If they have like a weak safe lane, you can easily play Legion Commander to beat him. The last time I played a Legion Commander game, I was versus like a... A Lycan and some other melee hero, and I just right clicked him the whole time because I knew that I had a higher chance of trading advantage uh, advantageously against them. And I bought a, bought a fast orb of venom, and you just chase them down. And if you can get that small little advantage, and you can pressure them right, you can do this very very often in your offlane Legion Commander game. So that's it for the replay. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned a lot about Legion. I will see you guys later. Goodbye.